Hey guys, my name is Seniac and welcome back to another episode of Woodville here in City Skylines where last episode guys we implemented in not only bridges across and over the highway for people to reach one residential area to the other but we also implemented in the beginning of our train network too. Now granted there's only really three stops at the moment and uh, it does hook up to the subway line pretty well as well. So Woodville is starting to get some really solid tr public transport connections. Which make it just a little bit easier for people to get from point A to point B. Now just before we jump into it guys, I just want to say if you have been enjoying this series and want to see more. Then please make sure you smash that like button down below. If you haven't already then make sure you do subscribe so you're notified when that next episode does come out. But... Since last episode, a few of you guys have been um, sending me some messages about Woodville, going, Yo, Sediac, something really cool that you could add in to replace what you've already done. And what you guys have been talking about is, uh, last episode I built these bridges going across. This is pedestrian, like walking. That's bike, that's walking. A lot of you guys sent me this, um, this, the link to the Steam Workshop for this little path right now. A pedestrian slash bicycle path, which means both sets can use it, walking and biking. Which I thought was a freaking sweet idea. So I want the anarchy, and if I upgrade this little section to it first, you can kind of see where you bike on one side and walk on the other. And if I implement this all the way across, that way we could hopefully get more people biking around. And if I upgrade the bike path here to also be walking, this is going to be freaking genius. I don't know how I, I don't know how I didn't know this didn't exist. If that made any sense whatsoever, I'm hoping it did. There we go, boom. So this is going to be freaking genius right now. This is going to change everything when it comes to this area, which is going to be so freaking glorious. So we upgrade just this one side to begin with, and I'll do the other side a little bit later. We're focusing on all that kind of um, a little bit later, because today I want to try and get as many expansions done as possible when it revolves around Woodville. Now, we recently got that new little, oh, let's go to there, uh, new little kind of residential area over here. I want to expand a little bit further down so we can kind of then utilize the train station at the very bottom. So it is all about trying to increase our population. I don't think the unemployment's high, no. So it means that we can add in a little bit more stuff right now to kind of build up those jobs. But I might as well just kind of run this along real quick. Because this is going to be really handy for this area where a lot of people do use these all these little paths right now. So if we can drop it in where they can also utilize bikes. Ooh, it's going to be juicy. And somebody mentioned as well, and I, I do apologize that I don't remember who says all these things. It's I'm just too foolish. But after I added in the paths going across the highway, somebody said, Seniac, why don't you do the same thing over here, across the highway? Not only to make it quite easy for people to walk to work and stuff like that, but I could also then maximize the train station stop too. Because they can walk and then go across the bridge over there, which I thought was a pretty sweet idea. So I'll be implementing that in a little bit later. And we also need to sort out the train line too, because I've noticed the cargo trains, they get a little bit caught up when there's a couple of, um, you know, passenger trains passing through. So let's stop the jibber jabber right now. And let's start with this then. So we're going to begin because we use this so far as like a main road sticking out. And we'll do the same to there. Uh, and we'll kind of end that there. And everything else then is going to be our little kind of um, two-lane plain street. Which I want the kind, uh, kind of like the same vibe on this side where there's no, not really much organization. It kind of goes where it wants to go. So let's see what we can do here. So if I bend this around to there. And then we kind of like follow the, the tree line in a way. And if I get it to kind of go straight up to there and into there, then what we've you know essentially done is created like a little loop that goes around, which is pretty cool. So then we'll 
play around with what we've got right now. So if I go for 11-11, bend there, that kind of cuts straight through. That's a path there. So that's all good. And I'm going to take a road that kind of bends up and around here. And cut it into there. So we're definitely going to have all this cool stuff going on right now with these roads. So we will we'll also get in the generic grid as well, you know, on this one side. So we'll go to there, cut it in. You know, maximize it to a certain degree. And we might as well squeeze a connection just there. Do I, I'm going to do a little double-double just like that. Have that tear down the middle. We do a little cul-de-sac coming off it. So we have some uniform going into some chaos <laughs> is the best way to put it, right? So then that would be a six by six. And then can we pretty much go straight across there? And then here, I think it would be great to create a couple of cul-de-sacs coming off that bit. And I'll do the rest myself coming off. Now, I think this road is pretty much going to end there. But if I bring that up, say, to here, and then we'll kind of like follow it through. Is that too much to throw a bend like that? Yeah, I think it would. All right, keep that to there then. So we've got all this little space open right now where I can drop little cul de sacs down. And then we'll kind of continue the grid format down to here and then we'll kind of wiggle off it and we'll go to there so that's as far as we kind of want the roads to go and then let's squeeze down then all those little cul-de-sacs so let's go for the small one to begin with spin this around so I drop one there one there we'll get one right up there. One right there. i got to do a little paths and stuff as well to connect that. And then I'm going to dot a couple every so often. So this is going to be like a really, really good little suburban neighborhood. There we go. It's going to be extra jazzy in this place. And we'll throw in two here. There we go. One at the very top just there. I might as well just come off with one there. So I kind of end that road. I still get anarchy on it. Let me kind of turn that off. So we can end that area there with one. Drop one there. Drop one just there. Frame one there and one there. So this is completely different, this side right now. And it's filled up, filled up with all different types of cul-de-sacs that we're going to be taking advantage of. There we go. And adding one there, one there. Finishes one just here. Squeezing one there. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I kind of, I kind of like that design, that feel. It does look pretty good. So then what we do is we upgrade, okay, any, any key back on, all the roads leading up to the cul-de-sacs. So we get the same kind of vibe and feel around. Obviously, we don't upgrade the little roundabout there because you lose the cul-de-sac um, setup. It's really weird how you can't upgrade the road on it. But it is what it is, and we've got to do what we've got to do. Boom. Sweet, mate. So that side is now all, all good to go. It should be. Get, it is actually getting dark as well. So it should be getting dark soon. It's like 5 p.m. on the evening in the Woodville place right now. And let's just do the uh, the path. So keeping with the by the pedestrian one. Sorry, we'll keep with that kind of design. So we can do a straight cut there. Now we'll do one just here. And it'd be good to kind of get something from over here as well. Because we have that subway stop there. So I think I'm just going to tear one down here as well. I know they're not going to like it. And it might be a good idea to then get a pedestrian crossing. 
just there. Which should be pretty handy. Um, I'm going to set up here that there to there. Nice little cut through as well. And we'll wiggle from this point. A little path going around. And we'll bring it from here as well. And then we'll do one over here. So I'm trying to utilize how much they can, you know, make this area as walkable as possible. And I think that'll be okay. Might have to slightly change up the bus route that kind of comes around this loop too. That would be kind of interesting. Um, right, so it's just now water. So fill all this up to there. There we go. Leave it like that, which is going to be fairly interesting. I'm actually quite excited to get all this in. So let's start then first with the commercial side of it. So we create our little shopping district there. And then we'll dot around the odd shop or two here, there, and everywhere. So do one just there. We'll do one just here. Um, I could actually do a nice little shopping strip along here. Which will be handy. And I'm going to throw one in just there as well, next to that path. So nice big chunk of commercial thrown in. I pretty much want the rest of it now to be residential. So we'll kind of go a little bit over the top right now with the zoning around this front. And let them get as much of it in as possible. There we go. So there's a lot being thrown in right now, like a real lot. Um, okay. <coughs> As I choke on air, let's sort this bus route out. Um, where's the bus route? So where it comes in here, instead of making it go there, we'll drag this stop to go here. We'll then drag the next stop to end there. I'll throw in a stop there as it enters there. So it, what it actually does, it comes in and goes around as a loop. That way we can maximize coming through this whole area with um, the bus line. We have the subway stop at the very end and it also takes them over to, or brings them from, should I say, the, um, the train station at that point. But these people living here might find it easier to walk down and then eventually we'll have this area set up too. So it should be all good. Uh, School-wise, let's squeeze a school in. So let's go for it being placed just there. We've gotten over there right now. Um, medical, we got a clinic on that side. I'll squeeze on in here. I'll place it on this corner over there. How much is that? Is that 10,000? Right, I've kind of got to be careful because I am spending money like left, right, and center right now. Um, can I afford to get any loans? That would be a good question. Okay, yes I can. Right, let's get the big boy loan. Just so I've got it to rock and roll. Got a fire station over there, so I don't know if it's... If I'm needed to replace one. Over there, no. We'll, no, we'll just go for that for now, that'll be okay. So we'll let this place build up then, so let's fast forward. And there's a few jobs that are going to be created from those commercial areas, but it's predominantly residential that I'm now squeezing in. So this area is going to have a completely different vibe altogether. I will drop in a park. So let's go for a... Should we go for a little dog park? I'll get it right there in the corner. Let me turn my anarchy off as well. There we go. And how's this area now going to come along? It should now build up fairly well. Fairly nice. Slowly, but surely, as they say. And this area itself, 
could even potentially push us over the 15,000 residents in Woodville right now. Which I'm actually quite excited about. So we're going to see a lot of traffic come up to this area. Still, the only way to get over here via car outside the region is like literally coming down to there, driving up, down, and then cross. Until I do set that up. So the fact that we're now getting more people living here, then it's going to push me a little bit more to setting up a little connection maybe over there. So while it is now going to get dark, let's try and focus on setting this up. The bridge is going across. So I think I'll do three. We'll do one that side, one in the middle, one towards the very end. And we'll elevate these. Might as well just do them by 10, right? So going across there is one. Uh, we'll do one here. Going across there. Right, let's pause a second because we need to delete power lines. Going across there. So... We'll bring it down to zero by five there and do the same this side. Oh, snap, what happened? Where did that one go? All right, let's try that again. There we go. Not sure what happened there. And then we'll do it over here as well. So basically what I'm doing is I'm setting it up to where they elevate up and down. But it's more importantly I can create like, you know, these glorious little bends. And then in, in just a second, we'll set up the um, like the connections to the actual residential side of it. So they're nice and wiggly and whatnot. I use the mover tool to kind of fine tune all of this. Let me delete these power lines real quick. And then we'll reposition them. So why do they run up all the way up there? Is it because this is like where it is? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Alright, we should be okay there then. So let's get back to business then. Uh, right now. And Okay, so we'll, we'll be okay for this side. So let's just get the move it tool up and running. There we go. So we have a little bit of character on the go. Let me grab both of them. And boom, you just move it away from the highway a bit. Same with that one. There we go. That one can be straight. That's fine. There we go, bend that up and over. So we kind of have like a little bit of character in this, don't we? And we can like just slightly bring that down. All good. And then we would quite like, and we'll do it just there. Does that connect over? Yes, sir. Yes, it does. And then we'll do the next one along here. Or should we come from the cul-de-sacs? Let's come from the cul-de-sac there and here. There we go. And... No cut through there. Okay, okay, okay. So now it really is dark. And what I need is the night time to hurry up. So I can set up the path. Or that bike slash path lane to cut through there. 
Um, but are we leading up to 15,000? We're almost on the way to 14,000. This area still slowly comes together. Which is pretty cool to see. The place is actually quite hustling and bustling at late at night, isn't it? Yeah. Um, right. So. We're going to have to create... Okay, this is what I need to do. So before we actually place down the paths coming from this train station, I think what I need to do is first sort out the train line. Now, it hasn't happened yet to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. But okay, oh, maybe hype it happening right now. Basically, right, when the cargo trains are coming into this area, if there's a passenger train waiting there, sometimes they get backlogged and they can't pass through. So what I have to do... Or what would be kind of like ideal uh, would be to run a parallel line here. But if I elevate it there, say by 10, that will go over to connect up to this side. So if I just quickly pause, delete that. And if I got this to now... Pass over. And if we then brought it down to zero there. So we go for a six by six bend to connect in. And then what this would do is run a little bit longer down. Right, it starts to elevate about there, doesn't it? And then I merge it in. But obviously with the move it tool we merge in a little bit better. There we go. So that line there will be used for our cargo trains. Which enable them to bypass that passenger train station and they don't get slowed down. My only thing is, is that we don't have the ability for... Where's the the bit that you select? There we go. We don't have the ability for passenger like intercity train lines to come from that direction to get over here. If that makes sense. But it's for now. It's one trade off that we kind of have to deal with. Unfortunately, it is just one simple trade off that we have to kind of deal with. Right? How well are we doing over here? Six thousand. So we're doing pretty good. It's pretty solid, mate. It is pretty solid. Daytime should be coming soon. So now that I've done that, we can now take a look at getting this set up. So we want to get them to pass over the train line there and to do the same. Okay, actually, we'll just do it over here because it's elevated on the other side, isn't it? Now, is bring it down to earth here a little bit too steep, do you reckon? Looks like it. Now, what if I played around with the elevation? So, i got to wait for a train to pass through. Right, train is there. I'm trying to get to a point where... Okay, so we still got a little bit of leeway... That's probably as high as we want to take it. Which is actually a reasonable height for that path. Which is good. So I bring that down to three. And if I just kind of wind it to or bring it to there, we'll just come down to zero there. And if I kind of wind it around like I normally do. To that for that to connect there. That to connect there. Right, I've done a very, very basic and loose option. So these now we can bring slightly down. So now we've seen a lot of people use these. They're going straight over. To get over to either work or potentially go to that train station is what they're doing right now. 
And uh, let's sort out this. Just bring it down a tad. There's no need for it to be so elevated. And then this one over here. So I like that it's not perfect. I like there's a slight little edge to this. It gives it a little bit of character. If you know what I mean. Gives it a tad bit of character. But let's sort out these. So for this itself here, I'm going to do it like that. Delete that. So I can bend those in. Create our little T. But for now, that will do just fine. Until I, you know, if I do eventually fine tune it, I can go down that route. But for now, that should be okay. It just, it, it, it's efficient. It does what it needs to do. Now, is everybody walking over here to get to the train station? That's the interesting bit. Some of them are, but some of them are choosing to go straight to work. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, unemployment now, 9%. It is creeping up, which is good to see, really, because it means then we can actually expand stuff like this. Uh, even though that these guys are complaining about there's not enough raw materials. So, that's probably where I then take a look at doing the worker barracks. So, what an industry. Worker barracks. I've only, I've only got one in. I can't remember if I had one in or not. Oh, actually, do you know what? I don't think I have any. So basically, a worker barracks increases the work efficiency of our workers in the industry area. Each building increases the work efficiency by 5%, up to a maximum of 100%, which means we can have a maximum of 20 of these buildings, which seems quite a lot, doesn't it? It actually does. So that is all a gradual incline. So i got to dot them along or in areas that I would see that it would be quite viable. So maybe if I placed one there, one there. So we've got two in just right now for the worker barracks. They need water. There we go. So it's all like little logging buildings that are just chilling. That's all they're pretty much doing right now, just chilling. And we'll probably get some over here too. So I can utilize this area a bit more. So they, they have to be on the road. So what if maybe I use that two lane plane street? For maybe it's slightly extending. And what I'm thinking of doing of here is Let's say I went a 10 by 10 bend. And I brought this kind of under that train station. Hmm. Doesn't seem quite right that. All right, if I just go up to here, if I got rid of that there and actually put a bend in, I'm trying to create like a little worker area at the back. So it's not in the industry area, of course it's not. We have to spread this over a bit more. And squeezing one there, one there, throwing one just there, one just there. So I've squeezed in four, and it's kind of like it's slightly out the way, right? So hold up just a minute, hold up. So I bring that straight across to there. So they're slightly out of the way. I can hook up the path to it as well. Like that. Might as well do one like that too. So workers can get to where they need to get to. It kind of bulks up this area a bit more. Maybe we do have this little bit of a dead space around the train tracks and the train station. 
I have these little worker barracks in that we can kind of dot around. Now I could put some on this side as well. So if I kind of then stagger them going that way. Kind of adds them in slightly. And then we bulk it up. We're placing down the conifers. Right? So if I just kind of dot down now a few of these trees. We have that beautiful little road. I wonder if I can anarchy in. No, you can't anarchy in like trees into the building. So you have that nice little kind of side road that kind of tears through. That leads over to all these little worker barracks. People can walk over here and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, really accessible. There's no skin off our nose there. That train station is going to get used a lot more. And hopefully it ups the efficiency of Woodville Inc. Meaning that we earn a little bit more money. The, effective, uh, the efficiency is now plus 62%. Which is good to see. Still got to get that road in. Still very important for me to get that road in. Uh, but at the same time, we do need to do other stuff. Now, I've also been thinking, is the unemployment still up there again? Yeah, 11%. About placing down some like dirty industry, but zoning it that it would be uh, woodland forestry industry. That could be the way to go. It could be a good idea. But is there any buildings, unique factories that I can throw in that are needed for, yes, the furniture factory. Now, this could be something really good around this area. You know, the furniture factory that takes all the goods from the forest industry, which we can kind of lend, lend, you know, lean towards building up something new. See, that could be cool, couldn't it? Now, the furniture factory, do I implement it around here, or is that something that goes somewhere else? I think we do need to create like a little industrial unit area over here. So, what other unique factories could I utilize from that? We also have the bakery. We, okay, we can't use that. Um, I could, let's see. Oh, the toy factory, but we need plastics. Printing press is the other one. And how big is that? Okay, right. So let's create our little um, industrial area right now where we take advantage of stuff. See, that would fit in pretty well there. Right, let's squeeze you in there. And then the printing press can go just there. So I've incorporated it and ingrated it around this area, which if I up the production rate, Meaning it would always want more pl uh, plain timber and paper. Same with this one. So that's one way to kind of get more goods out of it. There we go. And I'm thinking now, do I put the budgets back to normal? Because the road budget, we don't really have many roommates vehicles. Even though I don't think it kind of affects our... All the amount of um, vehicles that deliver stuff, if that makes sense. We do kind of need to up it. And if I place down a warehouse as well, I wonder what we can get from this. So if I go for a small warehouse, or should we go for a, a kind of a, a medium one? Let's go for a medium one. It could fit into one of these gaps. I don't know if that will cause too much issues with... Um, vehicles what if i squeezed it there let me squeeze it there and let me just see what happens so actually no because of um how it dips down do you know what i'll do let me pause it i'm gonna come off here and kind of shoot up like that how are we doing for power over here anyway we can kind of um Mix and match it along here. Get rid of those power lines there. Um, right, so if I squeeze that right up to there, and we can get two in just there, which is quite handy. Um, storage, okay, unbalanced. We'll leave it like that. But I can put in the planed timber in the one there, and then I can put in the P 
paper in the other one to kind of store it. Uh, obviously, before it gets sold. No, I won't go any further. We'll leave the roads like that. Has he got water? Oh, hold on. That was its one connection, wasn't it? There we go. We should be back up to running. So now we'll see a lot of traffic go around this area. Because it's now going to throw all the goods over here. But if these goods are all kind of centrally located, then these two unique factories can thrive off them being so close. They really would. Which means that these have all the buys for the product. Just got to get the vehicles over. So what if I actually now upgrade some of this road? So let's go to the highway. Let's go for that that national road that is kind of here. And let's start to upgrade the dirt road because it does slow the vehicles down. Let's only do it on the main strip. Speed up the vehicles to where they need to get to. There's anarchy under there. There we go. So we've put some investments into the forestry area right now. So vehicles can travel a whole lot quicker before we add in that dedicated road over here. That's going to be, be good for those guys. It's going to be really good for these guys. So they're still complaining about there's not enough raw resources. Now you would argue then, do you then start to up the amount of buildings here? But then again, you got a lot of these guys. They've, they've got the goods. They have the goods. Is there a raw resources? I know we got this one that stores it, raw resources. Is there one here? No. And how filled up are these? See, they're pretty much filled up as well. Like, the, the, the resources are there right now. The resources are there. They're just going to get it to the buildings. And these are starting to fill up too. So how do I get more vehicles? Make sure the truck's carrying them. Processing buildings can reach the unit factory. If mission resources are placed... Uh, I, I think it is more the fact that they're all placed all the way over here. But it ain't that far. Really, is it? It really isn't that far. We'll just see how it goes. But we're now over 15,000 residents. They're complaining about crime. So we get a small little police station down over it. So we've got one over there. Why don't we kind of throw this little one up on the corner here? That will kind of help solve a little bit. Oh, I just realized I've actually placed down zoning all on this section. Whoops, that wasn't meant to happen. That wasn't meant to happen. My bad. <laughs> My bad right now. And these are complaining about there is not enough educated workers. So what are the education levels like right now? Yeah, we've still got some way to go. Uh, high school, university. We don't have a university, anything like that. And how well is this doing? 42 passengers every 10 minutes. 31. 17. That's going to be a very busy one at one point when we got our downtown stuff done. 79. Looking good. And what about the... Subway stop, 34 there. We have one there. Is that where it goes? Hold on. Yeah, there, there, to there and there. Gotcha. Gotcha, boy. Gotcha right now. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We have a... Oh, a medium warehouse, which I did... Oh, wait, did I not move that? Let me delete. Because I didn't want it there anyway. And how much are we making right now of Woodvilink? 2,000 still. So we have 207 tons of raw produce. 
We're just gonna get to these buildings a whole lot easier and quicker. So is it as simple as it might be a bit too far away? To me, it doesn't feel like it's that far away. It really doesn't. These guys made money yet? Oh, wait, that the printing press needs plastics. Well, let me turn that off. How have I only just realized that? When I hovered over it, and these plastics, I'm so dumb. Um, right. Anything that's kind of wood? No, food factory, no. I think there is a... a like, wait, is it, this the furniture factory? Yeah. Like I said, I'm sure there's like something else that could do with it. But I think it needs something else. There's nothing like dedicated to only needing that. But yeah, uh, we are going to need to get in the, um, what do you call it? The shipping cargo harbour. That's going to be very important at some point. So unemployment's at 12% right now. So I could do with expanding the Woodville Inc. place. But I feel like I need to spend an episode dedicated to kind of, you know, making it a whole lot more efficient. I feel that's what I, I kind of need to do. So let me just finish off the rest of this road network right now over here. So finalizing all these little grids. And instead of going right up to it, we go right up to there instead. So it all kind of passes by. And then that road will kind of bend around and follow it. And then we'll create a little path. That cuts directly there. There we go. I know it kills the power line there. But in this area... Now, this is the next question. Do I do high-density commercial? It is a downtown vibe feel, isn't it? I'm going to do those two little strips there, high density. It's got water. Um, power's going to be the issue. Right, if I delete... A nice little section there for the commercial. So let me run this. Is that enough to give it power, you reckon? Yes. So a nice big chunk of uh, commercial there. As I said, this is going to start to slowly become like a little downtown vibe section. So we could really do with utilizing all of that. Which they'll probably complain about. There's not enough shoppers and all that kind of stuff to begin with. But there isn't really much I can do about that, I'm afraid. You're going to have to kind of suck it up. So these complaining about there's not enough educated workers. So I don't really want to bite the bullet straight away to drop a university down. But I do need to up my capacity of elementary schools. Now, for some reason they're greyed out. Is that because it's night time and they're not really doing anything right now? I think so. We'll get another one in over on this side to utilize the area. Uh, I'm trying to think the best place to pull it would be there. So it gives them a little bit more eligibility. High school, we're kind of at the top of that. Public library, no one's really using it. Um, and then university. I mean, eventually I want to get the campus down. But do I throw like a university down? Hmm. See, this here is a modern technology institute. That's a Blackwell Academy. 
Now, do you reckon that... Should I, like, throw this in for now? Or do you reckon it kind of won't... No, it won't fit the vibes. I, 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 I gotta build my own little campus. That would be the way to go. That would be the way to go. So there's no more point me messing about with it right now. Uh, Woodville Inc. So do you know what would be interesting as well? If I then got these warehouses, well, the storage areas here, and we just emptied them. That one there. Empty. So they're not storing the goods. They're just going to pump out all the goods right now. I'm hoping these guys will get what they need to get. Uh, low amount of resources available. There's plenty of buildings nearby. That's storing the goods. So I just I'm I'm not hundred percent sure what their issue is, to be honest with you. It is a weird one. It really is. Alright, still complaining about the not enough educated workers. We are working on that. Alright, that will have so bunch of shoppers right now, which will bring more people to this area. Which would be handy. And I think we need some kind of attraction, but I think 100% next episode, we've got to sort out two things. A cargo harbour, and then a shortcut route from here to over here. Because obviously they've got to go up there, go down there, and then there. Whereas we still wanted that road that kind of cut all the way across and then in. So they're the two things that we're going to sort out next episode, guys. We're going to end it for here. We've expanded up now to nearly 16,000 residents. We upgraded those little kind of um, paths that now include bikes. We've added in a, the beginning of our small little downtown area with that high-density commercial. And uh, we've added in a couple of unique factories, which we do need plastics. So I don't know whether I import them or... Just kind of set up really something really really small but also quick question should we add in some zoned uh, woodland stuff all these questions guys answer them in the comment section down below but it is pretty dark i think the next coming episodes as well we might start well we might turn off the day and night cycle we'll still have the day and night cycle but turn it off so we can actually see what we're doing when it comes to the night time because it does get a little bit too crazy trying to view things but anyway guys until next time I'll see you all soon. So good. Bye.